In this session, we are going to discuss about time and work, which is a part of quantitative aptitude. In this topic, we are mainly supposed to establish the relationship between time and work. That is, we either need to find out the work that can be done in the given time or the time which is required to do the given work. Here, we need to consider three important variables. They are as follows. The first variable is work, which is generally denoted by W. The second one is the number of persons, which we generally denote by the letter P. And the third one is time, which in general can be taken as T. To be specific, the third variable time here can be classified into two things. That is nothing but the number of days that we can take as D and the number of hours per day that we shall denote as H. So in all, you can see we have got the variables here that is nothing but work denoted by W, the number of persons P, number of days D and number of hours per day H. Both the number of days and number of hours per day are units of time. Let us now discuss the first module from time and work where the questions are based on the basic relationship between the different variables from time and work. Let us first establish the relationship between the different variables. As we have discussed earlier, we have got different variables like work denoted by W, the number of persons denoted by P and time which is denoted by T. So let us take the relationship between these variables. Now we can say that the work done is always proportional to the number of persons doing the work if the time is constant. That means if the time is not changing, then we can say that the work is proportional to the number of persons doing the work. So when more number of persons are working together, amount of work done will be more. And when less number of persons are working, the amount of work done will be less. Or in other way, we can say that if we need to do more work, more number of persons are required at a given time. And if you want to do less work, less number of persons are required for the same time. The other relationship here is between work and time. We can say that work is proportional to time when the number of persons are constant. So when the number of persons doing the work are not changing, work is proportional to time. So for more work, more time is required and for less work, less time is required. Which means as and when the work increases, the time required to do the work also increases. And similarly, as and when the work increases, the number of persons required will also increase. As we have already learned, the time here can be classified into two things. That is the number of days for which the work is done and the number of hours per day for which the work is done. So this can again be separated as work is proportional to the number of hours per day when the other variables are constant. That is number of persons and number of days for which you work. And similarly, work is proportional to the number of days for which you work when the number of persons and number of hours per day are constant. So if the time is classified as number of hours and number of days, then we have these three relationships. That is work is proportional to number of persons, work is proportional to number of hours per day and work is proportional to number of days for which you work. And when all these three are varying, we can have a combined relationship that is nothing but work should be proportional to number of persons into number of days into number of hours per day. So as and when any of these three parameters increases, then the work done will increase. And when any of these three decreases, the work done will also decrease. Now from this proportionality between work, number of persons, number of days and number of hours per day, we can derive a very important equation that is nothing but w1 by w2 should always be equal to p1 d1 h1 by p2 d2 h2 where 1 and 2 indicates the first and the second case respectively. So w1 is nothing but the work done in the first case, w2 is nothing but the work done in the second case. And similarly p1 and p2 are the number of persons in the first and the second cases, d1 and d2 and h1 and h2 are the number of days and number of hours per day in the first and the second cases respectively. So from this equation, we can understand that the ratio of work done in two cases should be always equal to the ratio of the products of persons, number of days and number of hours per day. In some cases, the time is mentioned only in terms of number of days, but the number of hours are not given. 
So we can simply assume that W1 by W2 should be equal to P1 D1 by P2 D2. That means we neglect the terms H1 and H2. Similarly, in some cases, we find that the time is given only in terms of number of hours per day, but not in terms of number of days. So there, the equation can be taken as W1 by W2 equals to P1 H1 by P2 H2. That is, we neglect the number of days in that case. So friends, based on the variables given in the question, the equation here can be modified and the required answer can be obtained. Let us now discuss the first example based on model number 1 that we have just learned. The question here is, 15 men can type 3240 pages in 6 days working 2 hours per day. How many men would be required to type 5400 pages working 4 hours per day for 3 days? So here we need to find out how many men would be required to do the work in the second case. Now as we have discussed the work ratio that is W1 by W2 should always be equal to the ratio of the product of persons, days and hours per day. So W1 by W2 is P1 D1 H1 by P2 D2 H2. Now as we can see from the question here the work here is nothing but typing the number of pages. So we can say that the work in the first case is 3240 pages and the work in the second case here is 5400 pages. The number of persons in the first case is 15, number of days is 6 and number of hours per day is 2. The number of hours per day in the second case is 4 and number of days will be 3. So by substituting these values in this equation we can get the required answer. So let us try to get the answer here. We know that W1 is nothing but 3240 pages. So this case is nothing but 3240 divided by W2 is nothing but 5400. So by 5400 should be equal to the number of persons in the first case is 15 men. So 15 into number of days is 6 into number of hours per day is 2 into 2 divided by the number of persons in the second case that is number of men has to be calculated. So let us take it as P2 into the number of days in the second case is 3 and number of hours per day in the second case is 4. So by simplifying this equation we can find out the number of persons required in the second case. Now zeros anyway get cancelled here 324 is nothing but 18 into 18 and 540 is 18 into 30. So again 6 into 1 is 6, 6 into 3 is 18 and 3 into 1 is 3 and 3 into 10 is 30. So here we can say that P2 should be equal to 15 into 2 into the 10 goes on the other side divided by 3 comes in the denominator here into 4 and this 3 goes cancelled 5 times and 2 here goes 2 times and 2 into 5 so the answer here should be 25. That means we can say that 25 men are required to type 5400 pages working 4 hours per day in 3 days. Let us now take another example based on model number 1. The question here is 4 men work 12 hours daily to complete a work in 9 days. If 16 men work 2 hours daily in how many days will the work be completed? Now the difference between this example and the previous one is in the previous question very clearly the work was specified that was in terms of the number of pages but as you can see here the work has not been specified. Remember friends whenever in a given question the work is not specified we can always consider the given work to be equal to one unit and we can proceed with the solution with this value. So let us now see how can we get the answer for this question. We very well know that W1 by W2 should be equal to P1 D1 H1 by P2 D2 H2. Now here the question says 4 men work 12 hours daily to complete a work in 9 days. If 16 men work 2 hours daily in how many days will the work be completed? So here he is talking about the same work to be completed. That means W1 is equal to W2 or we can say that the work done in the second case is equal to the work done in the first case. 
So when W2 is equal to W1, we can very clearly understand that P2 D2 H2 should be equal to P1 D1 H1. So let us simply substitute the values of these variables and try to find out the answer. So here P2 is nothing but 16 men into D2 is to be calculated. So let us take it as D as it is and H2 is 2 hours daily. This should be equal to P1. The number of persons in the first case is 4 into D1. The number of days in the first case is 9 into H1. The number of hours per day in the first case is 12. So by simplifying this, we can get the value of D. That is nothing but the number of days in the second case. Now, here D can be taken as 4 into 9 into 12 divided by 16 into 2. So 4 here goes 4 times. Again 4 into 1, 4 into 3 is 12. So the answer will be 9 into 3, 27 by 2. That is equal to 13.5. So we can say that the number of days required in the second case should be 13.5 days. So this is how friends when the work is not specified we can always consider it to be one unit and proceed with the same equation. Let us now take another example from model 1 where the work done in the two cases is different. Let us look at the question here. If 15 boys can finish a piece of work in 12 days of 8 hours a day then how long will it take for 16 boys to do a piece of work 4 by 6 as great working 9 hours a day. So as you can see here in the first case there are 15 boys who work for 12 days 8 hours a day. And in the second case we have got 16 boys here who work for 9 hours a day. And we are supposed to find out the number of days which is required to finish the piece of work 4 by 6 as great. That means the work done in the second case is 4 by 6 times the work done in the first case. So here we can say that W2 is 4 by 6 times W1 as it is given that the work done in the second case is 4 by 6 as great. That means 4 by 6 times the first work. Now W2 can be taken as P2 into D2 into H2. So P2 into D2 into H2 should be 4 by 6 times P1 into D1 into H1. So as simple as that. In the previous case we have found that the work done in both the cases was same. So we took W2 equals to W1. But whenever the ratio of the works is given to us as in this question we can simply take W2 equals to the ratio into W1 and then substitute the given values to find out the required answer. Now we know that P2 is equal to 16 boys. So 16 into D2 has to be calculated into H2 is 9 hours a day. This should be equal to 4 by 6 into P1 is 15 boys, D1 is 12 and H1 is 8 hours a day. Now let us simplify this to find out D2. 6 into 1 and 6 into 2 gives 12. Then 2 into 8 is 16 and here on the left hand side we have got 16. So we can say that D2 should be equal to 4 into 15 divided by 9. So that is nothing but 3 into 5 and 3 into 3. So this is equal to 20 by 3. So we can say that the number of days required in the second case to do 4 by 6 as great as the previous work should be equal to 20 by 3. So as you can see from the various examples of this model, either the work done is specified in terms of number of pages etc or the work is given in terms of ratio and in some cases the work done is equal. So accordingly we can use the equation that is W1 by W2 equals to P1 D1 H1 by P2 D2 H2 to get the required answer.